Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 17 of my Java algorithms and data structure tutorial. As you can see, today we're going to talk a lot about Java heaps. And if you missed any of the previous parts of this tutorial, I provide a link to the playlist above. So we have a lot to do, so let's get into it. So what exactly is a heap? Well, a heap is kind of like a tree, but it is normally implemented as an array. As you can see over here, this would be an example of a heap. But this also would be an example of a heap, which is what we have down here with the array structure. And you can see exactly how the indexes match up with the trees just by looking at this. Now one of the rules whenever you're creating a heap is that every row needs to be complete, meaning there's an item in each one of the nodes except for in the last row. And another rule with a heap is that parent keys are always bigger than their children. Now unlike a binary tree, the left child isn't always less than the right child. And why would we use heaps, you may ask? Well, they are very quick in regards to insertion as well as deletion. However, they are very slow in regards to traversal or searching. And as you're going to see later on, they are also particularly quick in regards to sorting whenever we take a look at the heap sort. So how exactly does a removal of a node work inside of a heap? Well, we're just simply going to pop off the root node up here, move up the last item inside of our heap into that position, as you can see right here, then we're going to switch 55 with 85 because 85 is larger than 55. And then we're going to take 55 and switch it with 65. And that is how removal of a node inside of a heap works. So how does insertion work? Well, if we're going to insert an item in, like 93, like we have right here, since 93 is greater than 80, it is going to jump up into that position. There you can see 80 is over in this position. Then because 93 is greater than 90, it is then going to jump up into the root spot and 90 is gonna jump down here. And that's how insertion works. Also, based off of the previous two things, you pretty much can see exactly how an array is thrown into a heap format, which once again, just means that all rows need to be complete except for the last row. And also that all parents are bigger than children. Well, if we have an item and it is not in position, meaning that it doesn't follow one of those rules, meaning that 71 is greater than 8, we would just swap it, and so forth and so on, with 82 to 68, and then 82 to 72, and now you can see in this final picture over here that the heap is properly sorted because all the parents are greater than the children, which is really the only rule. So now that I showed you all that, let's start writing some code. Okay, so here is basically the code we left you with in the last part of the tutorial, in which I showed you how to create or print out a tree structure in the console window using Java, which is a very, very handy thing to be able to do. I'm going to go over how to insert items inside of here, and this is going to be quite easy. We're just going to have an index, and then data3, which is our object we created in the last part of the tutorial, is going to be passed in there. And then we're just going to say the heap, which is an array, should go in the index that was passed over inside of here. And new data needs to be saved in that index. And that is all we're going to do in regards to insert. Now we are actually going to have to increment. And here we go. There's the heap. There's items in the array. There's max size. This is all the stuff we went over in the previous parts of the tutorial. And if you watch the last two parts, you'll be totally caught up if you somehow found your way here without seeing those. Now we're actually going to have to increment the number of items in the array outside of insert whenever we're using a heap. And the reason why is later on we're going to be using insert to throw items inside of the array whenever we use a heap sort. But I'll cover that later on whenever we get to that. So then we're going to say items in array and we're going to increment it. No big deal. So that's just going to insert items into the array and increment it. Now if we want to pop or remove items out of our array, also pretty quick and pretty simple, we're just going to go data3, which is what we're going to return after the item is removed. Then I'm going to check if items in array is not equal to zero, because I wouldn't want to try to pop something if nothing exists in the array. And then I'm just going to assign to a root value the root item from our tree, which is the heap. I'm then going to say the heap zero position should contain the value for the heap. And then we're going to decrement items in the array and save the next item inside of our heap in the root position. And then heap the array, which is moving everything that is greater than in the bottom upwards so that all the parents have children that have smaller items inside of them. And to do that, you're going to see this method here in a minute. I'm going to pass it the root 
position for our array and it's going to handle everything for me. Then after I'm all done with that, I'm just going to return root or in the situation in which we don't have anything to return, I'm going to return null. And we would get that, of course, if there are no items in our array. And then we get into the situation where we're going to actually create this guy down here below. And this is the method that we're going to use to print our trees out and a whole bunch of other different things. Like I said, all this code's available in a link underneath the video in the description and all that stuff we covered in the last part of the tutorial. Now what we're going to do is actually heap the guy. Basically what we're going to do here is we're going to take any situations in which a parent has a child that is larger in it and move that item that is larger into the parent position and then the item that is in the parent position move it down into the child position. That's all we're doing. So let's say we want to find a situation where we have the largest child and we're going to use this guy to do a whole bunch of things including the sort part. We're then going to say data3 root is equal to the heap index that is passed inside of here. And as you're going to see later on, that's often going to be zero. Then we're going to say while index is less than items in array, and we can actually divide that by two. We're going to say int left child is equal to two times index plus one. So what we're doing is just getting the left child for the index that is passed inside of here. And then to get the right child, because we're going to be comparing the left child and the right child, we just need to add one to it. So there we are. Now we have both the index for the left and the right child. Now that we have those, we can say if right child is less than items in array, which would be a must unless we want to have a whole bunch of errors. Now we want to check if the heap, which is just the array, with the left child index, and because we don't have getters and setters in here, we're just going to put key inside of there, is less than the right child key. We want to say largest child is equal to the right child index, else we know that that's not true. So in that situation, we want to say that the left child index has the largest child. And this is how we're going to compare them and decide how we want to move them into position. Now we're out of here, and we want to say if the root is greater than the largest child, well, we don't want to switch anything, so let's just jump out of the while loop altogether. Because all we're trying to do is move all these guys into proper position. So if the root key is greater than or equal to the heap part that has the largest child item inside of it, well, then we don't want to do anything. We just want to leave. No reason to change anything. Else, the heap index value, in that situation, the child needs to be moved up. And that's exactly what that's going to do. So that's how we're able to traverse this heap and move larger items up and smaller items down. Then we're going to set index equal to the largest child. And then at the very, very end, we're going to say the heap index is equal to the value of root. And make sure that's capitalized. And there you are. That is all we need to do to move all the child elements into the proper position based off of size and depending upon the value for the parent elements. And I actually could come down inside of here. Let's just execute this, see what we have here so far. There you can see there is our heap right there. There is the original array. We did a lot of that in the last part of the tutorial. And now if we want to heap the whole entire array, we could just go int j is equal to new heap and then get our maximum size divided by 2 minus 1. And then we can go j is equal to 0 and cycle through all these guys by going new heap and calling heap the array and then doing the heap for each one of those indexes. And then after we heap all of them, which is just move them into place, we could do something like print this out here and say heaped array. And then let's also say that we would want to do a print the tree afterwards. See how that looks. Let's file save and execute. And there you can see. 78's been moved up here to the top position, 58 and 55 are less than it, 43 and 3 are less than 58, and 32 and 51 are all less than 55. And that is how that is heaped. Now the only thing else we would like to do is actually take you through how to sort all these guys. Now how the heap sort's going to work is pretty much exactly the way that you saw how items were inserted. If you have a greater item up here at the top, since we're going to have this guy right here being 69 and we don't want it down here in this position, but we want it in the far right position, we're just going to pop that out of place, throw it into the proper position in the array, which you can see it is right here. Take 54 and move it up into the top root position. And there's 54. 
Now that we have that all set up, we're then going to want to pop off 54 and then move 42 into the proper position. And we know that at all times, all the largest items are going to be up in this upper three parts because that's what heaping the whole entire tree did for us. Then what we just need to do is move all of the greater pieces up into position and so forth and so on over and over again until we have everything sorted which is pretty much what you can see right here. So let's take a look and see exactly what all the code for that looks like. It's actually very simple. Now the reason why the code is very simple is because the heap method that we just created, heap the array, this guy right here, that guy did all our work. And I hope you understood exactly what it was doing. It's basically just comparing two children, saying which one is bigger, then deciding on which one was bigger, then comparing it to the parent. If it was bigger than the parent, they changed places. That's all that was going on. So here, all we need to do is cycle through the array and pop off each of the items in the array so that the items go from smallest to largest instead of just being in random order. And it's actually going to be quite easy because for the most part everything is almost in largest to smallest order currently. So to get this to work we just need to go 4 int k is equal to max size minus 1 which is there of course because max size is one larger than the actual number of items and keep doing this while k is greater than or equal to 0 and we are going to slowly decrement k then we're just going to go and have our item here it's going to be called largest node and we're going to say pop which is going to release that top item from our array and then we're going to say insert into the k position the largest node and we always know the largest node is going to be the top part of the tree because that's the way the sorting works. So now to test it, we're just going to go new heap, boink. Now we have to sort it with heap sort, no problem. And then let's say we want to come in here and actually print out the array just to double check that it was sorted properly. File save it and execute. And there you can see 24, 24, 31, 37, 39, 47, and 51. There you go. That's how heap sort works. And if you actually want to see how all of this is processed, in the code, I'm going to set it up so that a whole bunch of information is printed out like the original array. And then you're going to be able to sit here and actually watch how the trees are going to be changed as we cycle through here. Basically, to really get this, and you can see here, heap sorted, this is going to be the process of taking here this array where it has 89, 69, 51, 30, 66, 31, and 33, and sorting all that. And how that's all going to be sorted is, as you can see, 89 was replaced by 69, which is right there. 69 is then later going to be replaced as well as we cycle down through here and you can see 66 in that situation is going to replace 69 and so forth and so on over and over and over again until we get to the final part which is our sorted array and there you can see that. So pretty much provided you every single thing you could possibly want to do with the heap sort as well as heaps in general. Please leave any questions or comments below. The next tutorial that's going to come up, I'm going to take a break from algorithms and data structures just for a little bit because you guys demanded it. In the next couple days, I'm going to start my Android tutorial. Till next time.